how to haywire twist. The whole point of this is because the fishing season is kicked up for kingfish, cobia, jacks, tarpon, and in the surf and off the piers and jetties here locally. So we've had a lot of customers come in and ask us how do they do it. Other than buying their own leaders that are already pre-built, a lot of guys like to change up the way they're doing it. However, the main problem is how to do your haywire twist with a piano wire. One thing about piano wire is when you're using it, you can cut it with you know your clippers and stuff like that, your wire cutters, but it ends up leaving a very sharp edge. And if you properly do a haywire twist and when you go to break it off, there is nothing to get caught on. So it works to your benefits, so there's no tag ends that can catch you in your finger and very, very much annoy you at the end of the day is what's gonna end up happening. What I like to do is, for us, I like to pull off a certain amount off my spool and add my materials to it first. The reason I do this is so that way at the end of the day, here's my swivel, I add that first. And then I'll add a snap swivel on this side. And the snap swivel is because I build my slide line rigs a different way. I like to be able to hook many, many kingfish with the leader, but at the same time too, I don't want to sit there and have to unhook and unhook every single fish. If, they, if it's too badly torn up, time is of the essence on me that I'll just unclip it with my snap swivel and add on another piece that I already have prefab inside my tackle box. So, I've got my swivel on there, got my snap swivel here and the trick with doing your haywire twist is let me get in here and the reason why you don't know pliers is because sometimes you may not have a good grip on your snap swivel okay that's fine but if you don't then you can use your pliers it starts off with a simple bend of your wire you're gonna cross over your tag end and your main line okay right here is very crucial you can use your swivel by pinning it up against the wire as such and then you twist okay and when you start to twist you'll feel that swivel twist in your hand and lock in and when it finally locks in you can use that as leverage and what I've already done I've already done two semi twists right there however the first one I don't like. I like the second twist that is nice and tight right there if you can kind of see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue twisting that three to four more times. So there's one, two, three, and four. On the fourth one you'll notice I kind of twisted my main line to where it's almost straight. In doing this I am setting up so I can take my tag end around my main line five to seven times. So there's one rotation, two, three, four, and five. Okay, as you can see right there, I've got my, my beginning twist and then my closeout twist right there, those are nice and tight. And then my main line, right there, my main line twist. Okay, now here's the real trick. To break this off clean at this point, what you'll do is you'll bend this as such, a 90 degree angle away from it. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna give you leverage to use your finger to bend it over and you're twisting it at the same time. Normally it breaks off on the first one, but this one's being a little pain. And right there, I have broken it free with no tag end to get caught. There's nothing to get caught on right there. So it's nice and smooth. All right, now back to the swivel that I already have on the line. Remember how I put it on at the very beginning? Well, the reason I did that is because now when you build a bunch of leaders, you try to save as much material as possible. And for us, by me already installing it here, I don't have to cut my line 
and assume that, okay, I'm gonna have some trash. Well, yeah, you're gonna have trash, but what I do is I leave it on there. So when I go to build my next leader, I have a little bit of extra. When you're building two to 300 of these for per season, you'll see that that little bit of extra will add up and you may get two, three, four more leaders depending on how you build it. All right, so here we go again. Now, the swivel is a lot smaller than the snap swivel I was using on the other side. So I've made my kink in the line and then I'm bringing it over, I'm crossing it and I'm trying to get it as tight as possible. Okay, see there? Now that I've got my loop there, Instead of trying to hold that little swivel, because that's going to be the other thing. Doing it straight wire like this is going to wear on your fingertips and they will hurt and they will go numb. So by using a pair of needle nose, I'm, it allows me to make my twist. Again, one, two, and on three. Look, right here, you see how they're, they're spread out? As I'm, I'm shaping it, I'm bringing that wire straight. See, so now it's straight. No matter which angle you look at it, it's nice and straight. But my tag end line is now the main line over here for the next one. So I'm gonna take my tag line around my main line five to seven times. It's one, two, three, four, five. Now, Now you can see my line, my twist is on nice and neat. Take some close-ups and post them here in just a little bit. But to break my, my tag line now, instead of me creating a little bend here, what I'm gonna do is just bend it straight down and bend it back up. Bend it straight down and bend it back up. You're gonna do that three or four times and the wire will break free. And there you go. Without using any kind of tools, I've made it to where there's no catch, there's no tag for you to catch your finger on or poke yourself. And there is a closed out haywire twist. Okay. So, that is one portion of my leader. The next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my swivel and the treble hook. So, what I'm gonna do, take off some more here. Add my swivel on here and my hook. Now what I'm going to do is build my smaller section, but still the haywire twist right there. You're going to start again. Since I am using a treble hook and they're very sharp, I'm going to go ahead and have my needle nose ready. And normally right here is about two to three inches. You'll learn that. You can get smaller and smaller with it, but you don't go too small because when you go to try to do your final twist at the end, you're gonna end up stabbing yourself. So having a little bit of extra is okay. And if you'll notice, when you start building a lot of leaders too, a lot of those tag ends, if you actually storm off to the side, you'll see how much wire you're, you're throwing away. A lot of it is unavoidable. But if you do it the way I'm showing you by adding on, one of your pieces to the wire ahead of time, you'll actually save a lot of wire. You'll lose half of it instead of 100% of it. Okay, so now I've got my bend. I'm gonna make my loop. I'm gonna use my pliers, and now I'm gonna start my twist. By pulling them apart more than 90 degrees, it's gonna give me the twist I'm looking for. So that's two. And then on my third one, as I'm doing it, I'm going to straighten out my main line so it's equal to, or it's parallel to my twist. So right there, I'm going to take my tag line around my main line five to seven times. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and there you go. You know, sometimes you're not gonna get it all nice and perfect, but the twists are there that are needed to lock this knot in. And since I have the little bit of tagline there, I'm gonna bend it over 
and as I'm, I'm pushing it and twisting it at the same time. So there's one, and I'm going to grip. Now take care in bending your wire, and two. Okay. Now I've bent it a little bit, I got a little bit of a kink there, which ain't too bad, but you don't want to be kinking up your, your piano wire. Just broken off my tag end, there is nothing for me to catch on. Okay, now, my swivel that's already on, right there, this is going to be my determining factor of how long I want. See that little kink there? So if it ain't too bad, you can straighten that right back out. There you go. Okay, you want to keep your piano wires nice and straight. Right here, I'll usually do about 18 to 24 inches. Okay, so I've got my line set. I'm going to make my kink in the line so I can hold my swivel there. I'm using my pliers and I'm going to do my twist again. One, and look, I'm doing, it's probably about a good 100 and 150 degree angle by splitting them apart. Two, and three. On the third one is normally when I'll uh, do my, my straightening out of my main line. But I went over on that one, so on this one I'm gonna go one more twist. And now I've straightened it out, and I'm setting up to do my closeout of my twists around the main line. So one, two, three, four, and five. And there you go. So now I've got my two twists, and right here you saw where my I got a big loop here. It sometimes will happen, but it's all right. You can still close out the knot just fine. And again, since my spool of line is still attached, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend my wire back and forth. One, two, and then normally on the third or fourth, you'll break it off. Some wire will be a little more of a pain, but still, Bending it back and forth on that one little spot will get it to break free. And there you go, nice and clean. So there it is. Nice little haywire twist. There's no tag end to get caught up on. Back and forth in my finger and nothing to worry about. I want to add two, two more hooks to this. One will be my main bait fish hook. And the second, will be my trailer hook and then you got what they call a stinger so now I've got my main line again with my spool I'm going to add my secondary treble hook and over here on my loop that I have created I'm gonna add my piano wire and there you go your little tag end that you need to start with so you can get leverage over it make my bend and my kink now here be very careful people because the hooks you're using are going to be very sharp so as I'm starting to split my wire I'm twisting it and like I said it's more than 90 degrees two and then on my third one I'm straightening it out straightening out my main line and making that one so basically you're making them at 90 degrees now I'm going to take my tag line around my main line five to seven times. One, two, three, four, five. You see how small that wire is? It's probably three quarters of an inch. Well, if you keep going, you're going to have it to where it's itty bitty and you're not going to have good control over it. So here, I'm going to bend it and then I'm going to twist it around and there you go simple little break off making my piano wire my hay wire twist all nice and neat all right so the treble hook I've already put on my spool I'm gonna bring it up and normally between these two hooks I'll go about four to five inches and then I'll create another kink right there okay 
I'm bringing my lines over each other. Use my needle nose pliers to control my treble hook. And then I'm gonna start my twist. One, two, and then on the third one, I'm gonna bring my main line straight. All right, so now I've got my, my main line for my hook straight. Take my tag line around my main line five to seven times. One, two, three, four, and five. So now there's my, my main line with my hook. Here's my tag line. I'm going to bend it back and forth to break it off. One, and sometimes it, it may take a few times, but it'll be alright bending it back and forth. And you'll see it gets real free at a point that it's almost about to break. Okay, there you go. Nice little haywire twist. And I've basically built a kingfish rig right in front of you. Primary hook for my bait, a secondary hook, and you can even put a trailer hook, which that's what we can do real quick. The trailer hook helps out a lot because when the kingfish come up and swipe your bait, it's very, very fast and aggressive. They, they don't play. Sometimes you'll see them come straight out of the water and attack your bait. All right, so here we go. So I've got my spool. I'm gonna add my treble hook first. I've got my primary and secondary hook right there. Now my secondary hook is where I'm gonna attach my line. So I've got it in there, fold it over, now I'm gonna make start making my twists. Be sure you use your needle nose to do this because right here these hooks are pretty sharp. And if you notice, I always keep them on the left side. What you can do sometimes too is use your pointer finger and keep it keep it in check. By so now I can shake all I want, but my trouble hook is not moving, which is a very good thing. So go two on three. I've straightened out my main line and I'm taking my tag line around now. One, two, three, four, five. And there you go. There's your two twists and your five wraps around it. Can you see it now? Now I'm going to take my tag line, and even then you don't have to make that bend the way I've showed y'all before. You can bend it back and forth. And it may take a little bit longer, and it's not instantaneous, but it's nice and clean. That way you don't have any little sharp edges that may catch you besides the hooks. By using this technique of prefabbing your gear onto the wire before you cut it will actually help you save a lot of wire in the long run. It takes a little getting used to of being able to work with it like that. However, in the long run, it'll save you some money as well. So, I've got it. Use my pointer finger to keep my hook in check so I can make some safe turns without getting hooked up. Two. On my third one, bring my line straight and my tag line over here. See it? Okay, now I'm gonna take my tag line around my main line five to seven times. And watch out guys, because you will get hooked and jack yourself up pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, and there it is. There's your two twists and your five wraps. Okay, now, again, since this is my main line and I don't want to put all those kinks in it, I'm going to bend it right at the breaking where I want it to break, as close as I can there. Don't bend way over here because you're not going to get any leverage on it. See, I'm bending right at the spot where I want it to break.
there you go nice and clean there's no extra wire showing to get you hooked up and while doing these knots I've basically built a kingfish rig in front of you now this setup here can be used for trolling kings or free lining them off your kayak or your boat okay I'm fishing on a pier I use basically the same kind of style but the snap swivel that's right here I can add this on and now there's my leader my swivel will be up here attaching to my anchor line that's holding my leader up and as it's sitting like this this is where your bait will be and normally it'll sit right there at the surface of the water so you can see your bait going around in circles as your predatory fish will come around and they'll swipe at it now like I said before if you've ever kinged fish before of this portion of your leader will always get messed up however why throw away a whole good little checkpoint right here that way when this is all swallowed up by a king or too jacked up to continue all you have to do is disconnect right there go to your tackle box and hey I've got extras already built there you go now you add your extra one in and go right back to fishing little little trick of the trade from team hard life I hope you've enjoyed our video. The things you'll need will be a needle nose pliers, your tooth proof wire. We normally like 98 pound to 131 pound test. Your swivels, on your swivels too, those will be at least 80 pounds to 150 pounds. And then your treble hooks, a good 3x strong. Is highly recommended for your J hooks and your circle hooks. Excuse my hand right now. Don't have a very good hand right now. I'm a pretty good fisherman. So, again, how to do a haywire twist. Team Hard Life Captain Albert Zatucci. Hope you've enjoyed. Please subscribe to our channel as we will continue to show you the various ways of not tying and getting your gear to use. Please give us a thumbs up and give us a shout out. Let us know how we're doing here. And we will continue to further your knowledge by sharing ours. We hope you've enjoyed and please have a good day.